it's not partisan to go after the uh, uh, policies of detainee abuse and to try to have some accountability for what happened. Um, we have a bipartisan, and I emphasize that, Senate Armed Services Committee report, strongly supported by Senators McCain, Senator Graham, Senator Collins, and others. So we had a bipartisan report, which was very clear that the top civilian leadership of this country uh, authorized the use of these aggressive uh, techniques against detainees, uh, and that we paid a price for it uh, very heavily in terms of the view of the world of us. Uh, too many people now think we're a bunch of hypocrites. We talk about human rights and then they see Abu Ghraib. Abu Ghraib was not, as Vice President Cheney said, uh, the product of a few people acting on their own. Abu Ghraib was the direct result of the authorization of abusive techniques by Secretary Rumsfeld, which then went from Guantanamo, where they were authorized, to Afghanistan, to Iraq. Um, and that's what you saw at Abu Ghraib. The nudity, the use of dogs, the stress positions, specifically authorized by this administration, by the last administration, obviously the Bush administration, that was authorized specifically by the administration, uh, by the top leaders of the administration, and then by the Secretary of Defense for use at Guantanamo, both by CIA and by the military people. Then were taken to Afghanistan. We tracked that in 20 pages of detail in our bipartisan report. We tracked in those pages how they then went, the use of these and the authorization of these abusive techniques went from Afghanistan to Iraq. And what you saw at Abu Ghraib, forced nudity, use of dogs, stress positions, were specifically authorized for use against detainees at Guantanamo. So. Vice President, uh, they want to do what uh, Wolfowitz did when he was uh, the number two at the Defense Department and say that the actions you saw at Abu Ghraib were a few bad apples. No, they weren't. Those actions, those techniques were specifically authorized by the administration on December 2002 in a order of uh, Secretary Rumsfeld and then went from Guantanamo to Afghanistan to Iraq. The only people who have been held accountable for what you saw at Abu Ghraib and which cost us so much support in this world and which has played right into the hands of the terrorists, these are recruiting tools, these pictures at Abu Ghraib, for the people who are out to kill us. And the reason we've lost so much support in this world, support we need if we're going to get a united effort against terrorism, the reason we've lost them are these images at Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo, this use of abusive tactics against detainees. And um, it was not the result of a few bad apples. It was not the result of a few uh, guards uh, that uh, engaged in illegal activities, as former Vice President Cheney said. These actions, these pictures, and what people will remember, dogs, nudity, stress positions, people hanging on walls, had been specifically authorized for use by top civilian leaders, of the Bush administration at Guantanamo, and we demonstrated in this bipartisan 200-page report, 20 pages of that report, which had over 1,500 footnotes, um, showed how the use of those tactics, these aggressive, abusive tactics, went from Guantanamo to Afghanistan to Iraq, including Abu Ghraib. And there's been no accountability. Now, should people be held accountable? I believe that should not, that decision should not be made by partisans, Democrats or Republicans. I don't think I should make that decision. I don't think Vice President Cheney should make that decision, nor should President Obama make that decision. The Justice Department should apply whatever the law is to what happened. And whatever the recommendation is, it seems to me uh, should have a lot of power behind it, and I would urge that that recommendation be made by outside, independent people, probably retired federal judges, to make recommendations to the Justice Department as to whether anybody, top-level people, should be held accountable for what happened. Uh, again, I, I think we got to get this out of partisan politics, and the only way to do it, I think, which is reasonable, fairly quick, which will be credible, would be to have the Justice Department get some advice from some probably retired uh, federal judge or two. 
uh, I think there's got to be a, an assessment made of the high-level decisions that authorized the abusive techniques. I mean, so far, the only people held accountable are these lower-grade enlisted personnel whose pictures you saw at Abu Ghraib. They're holding the bag. They're the ones who are pointed to by the vice, former vice president or by Wolfowitz, who was the deputy secretary of defense. They point to them as, look, it's just a few bad apples. It wasn't a few bad apples. These were policies. And the vice president, former vice president Cheney says, these were policies which lawyers said the CIA could use. Someone has to look at those legal opinions. Where with, when they were, by the way, they were fairly quickly withdrawn because they are so weak in terms of their legal support. Putting all that aside, if we're going to get this behind us, we're going to have to have some assessment by objective people of accountability, if any, at the highest levels. It's not good enough. It doesn't represent leadership. It, to me, is not courageous. It is cowardly to point the finger, finger at some guards that are doing things to soften up detainees for the purposes of interrogation when those uh, aggressive, abusive tactics had been specifically authorized by the highest levels of the last administration. Well, because uh, recently um, uh, the vice president came out with some statements which are just simply not true, and I thought they gained a little traction. And since I'm chairman of the Armed Services Committee, and since we put out a 200-plus page report on the subject, um, I thought it was important to respond to what Cheney said. There were so many misstatements, I went through them one by one. Uh, and I think it's important that they be contested because if the world looks at us with this opportunity we have now with a new president who commands such extraordinary uh, support around the world, if suddenly instead of America being seen as a sign of hope, a, a symbol of hope, a symbol of change, a symbol of reaching out to allies, a symbol instead of now, hopefully, talking to our enemies, ending the unilateralist policies which so govern the Bush administration. If this Cheney approach, unilateralist and arrogant, takes hold, and it got some traction after he made his speech, it seems to me we are going to be a lot less secure. And so I thought it was important to take on the Cheney statements one by one and to uh, counter them with facts pointing to the specific bipartisan report, which we worked a year and a half on.